out, boys. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood Blockbusters. I am your host, Joe Hollywood. And once again, I am joined by Imagine Host Pete. Hey, hey. Andrew Walker. Help me. <laughs> George Johnson. What's up? And we have a couple of observers sitting in watching us like trained monkeys. And um, <laughs> thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, I wish we could have you sit in, but we'll, we'll work you in next time. This is what happens when Andrew ends up on the watch list. <laughs> <laughs> I need supervisors. Now, today's topic was inspired by a current trend in Hollywood over the last year or two, maybe a little bit longer than that, of uh, villains getting their own movies, which I'm opposed to. I, I don't like uh, celebrating uh, villainy. Um, but over the past few years, we've had uh, a Joker movie, and we got a new one coming out that's Joker yeah. and Harley Quinn. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Venom has had a couple of movies who yeah. was a, a villain in the, in the comic books, maybe not so much in the movies, but definitely in the comic books. And then you get movies and TV projects, uh, dedicated to Hannibal Lecter, which I think is insane. <laughs> um, and so that started the conversation about the anti-hero, uh, in film and like I said, I'm not a fan of celebrating the villain, but I do find villains with interesting backstories and motivations to be far more interesting than someone who's just a bad guy like Lex Luthor, who's just a bad guy to be a bad guy. And so the topic of today's podcast is going to be anti-heroes in film. Uh, you know, growing up in the movie theater in the 70s and 80s, uh, Around that time period, especially in in the mid to late 60s, is kind of when that anti-hero became the thing, became yeah. in fashion with uh, <clears throat> with Butch and Sundance and yeah. Easy Rider and, uh, you know, things like that, that kind of put the anti-establishment guy in the spotlight, the, the guy who uh, rebelled against authority. Mad Max, yeah. Exactly. And then... You know, in the 70s, uh, you know, we had a lot of car chase movies, and usually these people driving these cars were eluding and evading the police. And really, and that's where I want you guys to sort of come in. How do you define the antihero? Now, for me, it's someone who might be on the wrong side of the law, but has reason to be there. There's a motivation there. Maybe they were wronged. Maybe they were framed. Um, uh, whatever, but uh, they're on the wrong side of the law, but the crowd, the audience, roots for them, cheers them on. Um, so, Nick, how would you define uh, the anti-heroes that you enjoy? How would you define them? See, I'm glad you brought this up because some of the people that you mentioned, I would just say they're villains. See, there's a villain and anti-hero. Mm -hmm. I almost look like that's like a dark Jedi and a Sith, and I, I bring that up because I think Anakin Skywalker was an anti-hero. Vader is a villain. Right. So, exactly. So there's even though he was redeemed at the end, but yeah, Anakin would bend the rules. He's like, you guys are like so stodgy with your rules. I I, I like having a wife. I like having a kid. You're forcing yeah. me to like keep this undercover because you guys are so like, you know, sclerotic in your rules. Yeah. Wow. Like most anti-heroes, he was anti-authority. Yeah. And that was kind of the theme of uh, was it Clone Wars yeah. and uh, and he was seduced by power because they want to have order. For order, you have to have power, but then yeah. it, it leads to a thing. So for, for me, an anti-hero says they're almost like neutral. They'll say, listen, I'm not going to go out and like drop a baby down a well. Yeah, but unless I'm pushed to. <laughs> yeah, and, but if you, but if you incentivize me, if, if someone presented them, like, if you, drop, if you drop that baby down a well, it'll save a million people. They'll be like, well, all right, I got to drop a baby down the well, and I'll just I'll drink, I'll drink my problems away later on. Exactly. You know? I'll, but I'll do it. I'm willing. To, I won't sit there like I can. You can't make me drop a baby down a well. That's, a, that's an oddly specific reference. Yeah, yeah. What What do you think here? Is that Is that parlance here? <laughs> now, I mean, what What exactly are we going for? I have to set an example where you're like, oh, that's really dark and messed up. Like, I mean, that, it has that is be, really dark. It has to be. It has, has to be a messed up choice. But is there a specific movie or a specific instance, or did oh. you just kind of pull that out of your behind? I did pull that out of my behind, but now I'm thinking about. I'm going to credit that to the Ring. 
where that girl was dropped oh. on the thing. So now, okay. so at least that, now I okay, have, that's that makes sense. That yeah, now I'll do that because I was like, "Wow, Nick, you need therapy." I'm like, ah, yeah, <laughs> well, that maybe. was like six episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, all right. <laughs> Andrew, what what's I, your definition of the anti in that, in that same universe, Han Solo. Oh sure, yeah, he's a smuggler. He's probably did some bad things in his past. He yeah. shot oh, yeah. Guido. He For shot sure. Guido. Point okay, point. but it, but in Dungeons and Dur- Dungeons and Dragons terminology, there's chaotic good, ne- right. yeah, and there's chaotic neutral, neutral. That's where an antihero would I think would fit chaotic in the chaotic good, chaotic neutral like yeah, yeah. Right? range. Yeah, I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons yeah. in years, but I I do kind of like mentally sort yeah. people out like that. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, the, Han Solo is such a great example because really in the first Star Wars movie, that uh, I don't call it a New Hope, I call it Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, his main motivation is money and yeah. greed. Right. Eventually, you know, he in he, the last fifteen minutes of the movie, he, he gets he, guilted. Yeah, yeah. Around, yeah. <laughs> he gets guilted. He gets guilted to help. He's like, I came back to help you. But how yeah, much yeah. of that was Leia? He just yeah. wanted to get layered. Leia. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But no, I love I love the line, and I just watched this the other day for probably the hundred and fiftieth time. But I love the line when they're in that control room, and and uh, Luke says she's rich, and he goes, How rich? And he goes, More wealth than you can imagine. He goes, I don't know. I can imagine quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I love that line. That's his motivation. And he, I got a, I got a price on my head. I need to pay off. Even has the line like, I don't know. I, I, I'm either starting to like her. Or I'm going to kill her. Like, one those, <laughs> like when she's bossing them around, like lovely girl. Yeah, yeah. And then remember at the beginning of Empire, he's about ready to leave that base. Oh yeah. Until circumstances. Until circumstances yeah. bring him back. Now I don't know if it was he was going to help out because of that. Empire is going to help evacuate, or if he was still there for. Later. Although in that thing, it's kind of messed up because he was set to leave. Luke got hurt. Then Luke did that really weird kiss. Now in hindsight, and he's like, "You know what, man? I'm going to stay just to prove you wrong." That was a yeah. part of it that's going like, "Like, oh, good." That was before George Lucas finished writing Return of the Jedi. Where he's like, I don't oh, know, man. We're I gonna think- we're gonna have uh, them be brother and sister. Yeah. I, I, I he get put the feeling he, George yeah. was sort of making things up as oh, he went yeah, along, yeah, yeah. and it doesn't it's, all absolutely. add up. Yeah. Although it, it feels perfectly fine now when you watch Game of Thrones, like yeah, that happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what what I find is interesting is that as as a culture, and this is maybe a larger concept, but and you'll laugh probably at me for even bringing it up, but I think in the early part of the 20th century, the books that you read, the people that you read, are typically black or white. The the villains are black or white. They're good or bad. It doesn't hit until like the 70s, and again, we're going to have to go, we're going to have to count how many times we use The Godfather in everything that we do because yeah, yeah, we yeah. circle around a bit to it. I'm re-watching The Godfather because these morons here have decided that it's a good movie and that they want me to re- watch it, and so I'm having to watch it again. All right, so here it is. Okay, so. Oh, you're, uh, you're oh. poor heart. Yeah, what a, what a <laughs> chore. Sir, I am a moron. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. You know that. Um, but what's interesting is, as I think you hit the 60s and the 70s, and it's far more interesting. And I think it's become part of our culture now to now start questioning, is this person really a hero or an antihero? We're seeing it in the elections now. We're seeing it with Israel versus Palestine. We're seeing, yeah. uh, we're seeing it with uh, uh, d- different parts of the world. And I love that um, we're seeing more narratives that are saying there's a backstory. This yeah. person was pushed to that. Yeah. They didn't just wake up, and they're not just a bad person. It's really and, a matter of perspective. Like yeah. mm-hmm. one of the, uh, and one I of love the, the way that this is going. Yeah, yeah. Go on. One of the craziest things I witnessed in real life history was O.J. Simpson was accused of murdering his ex-wife and just an acquaintance. And when he's in that Bronco going down the highway, there are people cheering for him, <laughs> holding signs, going "Go O.J." And I'm on TV going, "What the hell?" So a lot of that comes from a matter of perspective. You're either cheering O.J. on, yeah. and you're like, he's a murderer. And that's what makes an interesting antihero is what side of the fence are you on? And how, you know, if you're on the side of the law, you know, the bandit is an a-hole. Well, like, and if you think about the outcome of that, it wasn't even, it didn't even get to the point where was he right or was he wrong? The outcome was a whole lot of African-Americans saying, this is what happened to the jury and he was he was acquitted by a jury of his peers. We're done here. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Whether or not you believe the glove fit, whatever. And that's an interesting that's an interesting side. And so, in a sense, he has become at that moment the hero. It wasn't until later, yeah. until the civil suits came out, that proved him. Yeah. And that to me was fascinating. 
Yeah, and I think I that agree. there's a like, very excellent point, Joe. Yeah. Now, you mentioned The Godfather a moment ago, and there are certain actors, I have several actors on my list here in front of me, that have made a career playing the anti-hero, and one of those is Al Pacino. Um, if you were to watch The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two back-to-back, you watch his descent into madness. He comes back from the war a hero. Uh, the war obviously affected him. But as he witnesses this crime world that his family's involved in, and he sees what happens to his father mm-hmm. and, um, and his, you know, his brother and all that stuff, you see that descent. But I don't think anyone who watches those movies is opposed to him, is against him. They kind of see the justification for the path that he goes down uh, at the end, becoming you know the full fledged Godfather and having people kiss his ring and everything. So there's there's a motivation there, and for me, the turning point in that character's arc, Michael Corleone, um, is in the restaurant when they want to set up a meeting with the with the police and uh, the the member of the crime family. And everyone's like, well, they're not going to allow me to sit down at the table. And Michael stands up and says, I'll do it. And it's like, no, wait a second. You're the war hero. Everybody loves you. And in that moment, he goes into the bathroom, gets the gun, comes out and murders two He's people. got immunity. I mean, in a sense, they're like, no, nah, he can go to where he wants. What do you mean? Well, they know he's just a, he's a civilian. Is that, yeah. He's specifically calling a civilian. Anyway, go on. Yeah. So that's hit the beginning of his descent is yeah. he so callously uh, murdered those two people and that became his path to what he became but like i said when you watch it it's hard to think of him as the bad guy because the cops are crooked and he's going up against a rival crime family who are guilty of the same atrocity so you find yourself rooting for michael there's also a thing uh, there was a documentary on um the serial killers and there was this, ooh, i forgot the serial killer in the in the 70s but a lot of women were like well he's handsome i can't oh bundy bundy thank you Jeez, bundy. when they did yeah. documentaries on that they're like he's kind of cute. cute and, and I'm you're like, like you wow I'm like, i you know, can't he, get a date yeah <laughs> like he murdered people and they're like <laughs> but he's just so handsome and he's just so and it's it's one of those things where you talk about people cheering for oj and then sometimes in the joker movie it's if people feel wrong by a system it they're going to look at some, I wish I could, there's almost a part of them that say, I wish I had that kind of courage. You know, I don't care. It's almost like a Bonnie and Clyde thing. I'm going to give a finger to the system. And, I'm, and then there are people in the Bonnie Very and Clyde movie. Very good point. Yeah. Bonnie and Clyde, they were like rooting for Bonnie and Clyde in that movie. And then when they got shot, people were like, oh, Bonnie and Clyde. I'm like, they murdered people. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen to Bonnie and Clyde? And that wasn't just in the movie. That was in real life. Yeah. When, when bystanders kind of came up and saw their bodies in the car, they were taking souvenirs. They were yeah. cutting things off. Like, People worship Bonnie and Clyde because they were anti-establishment, which yeah. is so crazy. And a, a big part of that, though, has to do with the press Sen- oh, yeah. sensationalizing yeah. everything, even back in the 20s or 30s when everything oh, yeah. happened. Oh, and, yeah. And it's just think about been. it today. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mentioned how Al Pacino has made a career out of playing the anti-hero. I, I recently went through an Al Pacino phase where I watched several of his movies over the course of a week or two, and um, I'm mad at myself for waiting so long to watch – this one movie, but I just watched Dog Day Afternoon for the first time, and here he is, a bank robber, but you love the guy, and you sympathize. He's a good person who's robbing a bank. His buddy, who's got the shotgun, he seems like a good person, too. These seem like good people who've made bad choices, and you got the crowd outside cheering him on, and and holding signs very similar to the whole OJ thing, and uh, you know, kind of a tragic ending at the end there. But a little bit of I a mean, Robin Hood Pacino. vibe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he was ever going to give the money away to the poor, but you know. Well, his intent was that his lover was going to fund a sex change operation, which was based in fact. Yeah. And I don't know if he ever did get that operation. I think he might have, but you're rooting for the bank robber. Um, I watched Serpico. Here's a guy who's supposed to be a good cop um, seeing corruption throughout the New York police system, again, based on a true story. And he becomes almost the, the villain in the film because everybody is corrupt but him. And cops retaliate and cops yeah. are, you know, they think he's the villain because he's not playing along. So it's how, cops, it's how cops feel about IA, internal affairs. Oh, you're a rat. You're a snitch. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
even though you're snitching on us. It happens in almost every profession. There are doctors that if they come in drunk or aren't, and then they do a mistake, they ask, hey, can you cover for me? It's like, you just yeah. messed over a patient. Yeah. You yeah. cut off it's the a, wrong leg. It's a brotherhood. You got to yeah. look out for each other. Do you, oh, yeah. do you think OJ now, God rest his soul in heaven, uh, do, you think, <laughs> do you think he ever caught the, the killer? He was He was searching for him. Remember, he wrote that book, If I Did It. I think he saw the killer every time he got ready in the morning. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think he stared him right in the face. <laughs> As a matter of fact, and I, I might be getting off topic a little bit, but I had read somewhere that his his pastor, I believe, was Rosie Greer. And somewhere along the line, I heard that he had confessed to Rosie Greer that he had done it. But there's that pastor... Uh, confidentiality, so it never was really. Made How far does that though. go, though? Somebody told you they blew up the World Trade Center. Yeah, yeah. To your pastor or your therapist, it's like, well, well with, come on. with therapists and counselors and things, there is that line. Yeah, They'll laws, tell you yeah. up front if you tell me that you are, are going to kill somebody or you or, kill somebody or, yeah, or, yeah, or, or kill yourself. Him. That's true. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting though. Al Pacino's been in a number of Scarface. He's been he was oh, incentive yeah. a woman, in if heat. I'm not mistaken. And no, he kind right. of plays the he plays the guy who is a complete idiot. He does all these dumb things and he's the reason he's blind and another guy's dead or something like that. Yeah. He, he it just he seems to be this perfect lovable uh anti hero. Yeah. Yes. Lovable loser sort of a thing. Yeah. And and I did among those movies that I watched was Scent of a Woman. And uh, yeah, he's his character isn't he's not really likable, but there is something that draws you to him. And then at the end with the courtroom drama, he comes to the young guy's uh, aid and kind of redeems himself at the end. But those are the sort of characters that Al Pacino seems to be drawn to the the likable losers. It, so, I, you know, yeah. I look at like Batman's perfect antihero. He's not a hero. Like, he'll go the distance, but that man's a psychopath. Well, I'm glad you... which which version are you talking about? Because uh, no, no, there's no. Batman from the '60s. Who's yeah, just... well, well the, uh, the Adam West one was kind of sick. <laughs> yeah, Adam West. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the, the more contemporary. Well, the, the Batman in the '30s had a, had two pistols. Yeah, right. And was shooting and people. Shot people. Yeah. yeah, Bob Kane's original <coughs> creation. He was shooting people left and right. No. But no, I'm glad you brought that up because that that character is on my list. At the end of the Dark Knight, he's a fugitive on the run from the law. Yeah, and he's like, I'll take that i'll take that bullet and at the beginning of the next movie he's you know on on the run but even just even if you just look at the dark, the character itself uh, the one that's accepted by the majority he's he's psychotic he had a breakdown he suffered a trauma and he yeah. never processed it in the most unhealthy way he's just fortunate he had the resources but i think he still would have uh, he would have gone to he would have stolen to build himself resources to give himself an underworld to attack the underworld. It's just yeah. And why does he do it? I mean, not with comic stories. You say, okay, well, you are a billionaire. If you want to get rid of crime, you could fund a bunch of nonprofits and start helping people. But, <laughs> but there's an aspect of him where I I actually appreciate what they've done lately in some of the in some of the graphic novels where some of the villains pointed like we'll be sharing a cell. I'm a, I'm a yeah. dark reflection of you because you yeah. can't. You're Kill just me. Man. Yeah, you're you're psychotic. Yeah, you go around beating up people. Yeah, mentally the, ill people. Yeah. That's right. To keep <laughs> somehow getting out of the asylum and 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 that's what that, they loop. always keep juxtaposing Superman. Superman just says, "I operate in the shadow." You know, I, I operate. If, I, if there's a cat in, in a tree, I'll go save the cat in the tree. If there's yeah. someone, I'll save people. Even though I'm technically a fugitive, I'm just I fly around. I mean, what are you going to do? Arrest Superman? He can't. Yeah, yeah. Now, in in more modern times, if I was to rank my list, I have here in front of me, up near the top, if not at the top are two of my favorite antiheroes who were in the same movie, and I'm talking about think, Pulp Fiction. Okay. Uh, Vincent Vega and uh, Mark Jules. Star, uh, Jules Winfield. Jules, yeah. And this is a perfect example of two awful people. They kill people for a living. They're enforcers. They yeah. work for Marcellus Wallace. But you sit there and you listen to them talking about a royale with cheese and foot massages, <laughs> and you're like, you know what? I like these guys. I want to hang out with these guys, but they're stone cold killers. They could have been a couple of construction workers. Which brings workers. up a really good point. If they're interesting people, exactly. Yeah. If they're interesting and they have and they talk about themselves and they talk about their 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 problems and they they disagree with each other, regardless of the fact that they're going to go in and murder a bunch of people, 
it's it's kind of a trick, right? These guys look pretty cool. Maybe they're maybe they're going to let these guys go. <laughs> no, they don't. So now I'm conflicted. There's right. disharmony in my heart. It's like, yeah. why? I, I don't like these guys, but I do. Yeah. That's that to me is way more interesting than the 1940s. You know, and that's yeah. a great anti-hero where you have that. Com- it makes the you think you're like, do I like these guys? What does it say yeah. about me? I'm afraid of this guy. Like, <laughs> if I saw this guy, I'd be afraid of him. Like, I'm going to the other side of the street. But yeah. if he has, hey, you want, hey, George, you want to grab a beer with me? You know what? Yeah, yeah I'm right here. <laughs> Yeah, I'll grab Damn. a beer. I want to see how psychotic you really are. It's like, really? You, you, that's what you did? Man. I'm going to go throw a kid down a well. But. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to give a really cool speech while he does it. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but... It's um, a brilliant one. Apparently, he, he's a religious man, too, because he's quoting this verse or whatever but yeah they're they're two enormously likable characters who do really terrible things and again a lot of anti-heroes are religious yeah the whole mafia <laughs> family they go to church forgive me if oh I'm like, yeah dude you had a horse's head in someone's thing what are you talking about <laughs> well how many hail marys is that I don't, I don't get that yeah no you're absolutely right and that seems to be a reoccurring theme in in anti-hero movies is they go to church. They portray themselves as family. They men, sell and Bibles. I, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Nobody, <laughs> nobody talks to me about my business, you know. And they have the closed door yeah. meetings. And even though we focus on movies, a perfect example of that is is Tony Soprano. I mean, yeah. it's the same thing. So I yeah, mean, one of my favorite a- antiheroes of all time is Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that is up. Is he an antihero? He's, I to me, he's a full blown hero, but. If you really examine it, you're onto something because he kills a lot of people. Yeah. Who might be But they're Nazis, so it doesn't really count. Yeah. I love I love the Jiminy Glick interview <laughs> with Steven Spielberg when he goes, What's your beef with the Nazis? I love that. But no, you're right. He's <laughs> he's killing people who are like trying to, you know, protect the Ark or the Grail or whatever. You know, the one swordsman in the in the market, he just shoots the swordsman. Now, there's a story behind that behind the scenes where Harrison Ford was too sick to do an elaborate yeah. stunt, so he just pulls out the gun and shoot him. But you do have a point there. That he didn't give a guy the guy a chance to surrender. I'm sure if you point the gun, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to walk, we'll take my sword and back off. He's like, nope, click like, bang. But you can tell that he was this. exhausted, and <laughs> yeah. everybody just felt like he'd run a lot. He'd been dragged. I mean, I don't know if he'd been dragged by the car behind at that point no, or whatever, yeah. but he'd, he'd been through a lot. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great argument. Is Indiana Jones a hero or an anti-hero? Now here he is taking relics from their country of origin and taking them to these museums, which is still an issue today. Is still that an there issue. are countries that are like, we want our we artifacts want those repatriated that exactly, are in the yeah. British Museum. Or yeah, whatever. the British so, are the, the worst for it. Yeah, <laughs> so other nations, other races might look at Indiana Jones and go, you're a villain. And, you're stealing and our, sec- our history. And in the second movie, he's like, I'm doing this for fortune and glory. He <laughs> <Yeah, it's> just <laughs> right. says fortune and glory. So it's like, are you still doing fortune that, and glory? That like, wasn't <laughs> actually any of the right actors. It wasn't even, it was claimed to have been all the same actors, but they weren't. They were really close. To, so I don't even think of that as, as part of the as part of the quadrilogy or whatever it is. <laughs> it's just not even. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, that that's a great <laughs> argument for Indiana Jones being an antihero. I like that. Kind of along yeah. the same vein of like Batman. Depending on where you stand, they could be a hero or an antihero. I mean, I mean, he, look, like I said, he's not going to go and purposely do harm to some people, but. You're in his way, and yeah. there's a goal. Uh, just yeah. saying. Now, another modern anti-hero that I I absolutely love. There's been four movies now, and I've loved every one of them. And they're mindless fun. There's not much of a story, but the John Wick movies Mr. have been Wick. incredible. Just I should say, incredibly entertaining. And in the first one, you know, at first he seems like he's a victim. And then when the the one guy's bragging that he stole the car from John Wick, they're like, "You did what now?" <laughs> and they're like, "He's he's coming for you." And you're like, "Huh? I wonder what the story is with this John Wick guy." And then over the course of the next four movies, he's another ruthless killer who apparently who's got a avenging yeah. his death his of his dog. dog. Who Come on, relate to that? I can't relate. To I that. mean, Vic, I can't relate to that. He's going in and he's shooting people <laughs> left and right. 
It's as bad. There was a movie called Face Off years ago yeah. with, with Nicolas Cage, Cage and, and John Travolta. Travolta. Oh, that was awesome. And I turned it off about halfway. If I'm standing five feet in front of somebody and I've got a submachine gun and I'm missing, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just felt it was dumb. So I haven't, revisited, I haven't revisited Wick, but I, I that first one was like, wait, this is all over the murder of a dog? I mean, I understand that. Maybe kill one person, but... You're cleaning everybody out of a of a prost, of a brothel, right? Yeah. I, I was cool with the first movie. At the end of the second movie, he kind of brought that on. Everything <laughs> after the second movie, he brought on himself. When that guy, that smug guy, was like, "Well, you can't kill me inside the Continental," and, <laughs> and his buddy's like, "Don't do it." And I'm like, "You know, Pete, you could have like Lawrence Fishburne off the guy later. You could work the deal. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, have the Bowery kill him." But he's like, "Nope, I'm going to do it right now." Click bang. He he's did like, "Break the rules." You're excommunicado. But why, Winston? I'm like, dude, I, are you kidding me, John? <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I love all four of those movies. And, you know, I, I have a, a problem with real life violence, like movies that depict serial killers and all this stuff. It's hard for me to watch. I really don't have a problem with cartoonish violence where. Like Deadpool? You know, yeah, that, you know, uh, John Wick takes out 150 guys throughout the course of a movie. And no, you that's get true. numb to it after a while. And yes, I know these guys probably have families that they go home to. I remember. But like if, some, you uh, if you compare this to like a bad Liam Neeson or even a good Liam Neeson movie, yeah. it's like they stole my daughter or you know whatever. Well, that's, that's a real reason. No, yeah, no. yeah, and I can get behind that. If you want to murder everybody, but come on, your dog. I will. I mean, say have we this. really gotten? I'm there not, are people out there, dog lovers, pet lovers, who are like, no, I get it. Do you have a dog? I don't now, but uh, and we've we've got three cats, and I love man. them. But I sure shoot. I sure shoot. <laughs> wouldn't go. I mean, but are you willing to take on a global assassin league <laughs> for yeah. your dog? I get. It. I mean, there's a there's got to be like a threshold. Like, are you willing to declare war on a crime family? Yeah. Uh, you man. must be really bored or mentally <laughs> yeah. unstable. I mean, more than the dog can go get a new one. I hate now, to say it. But. I don't have a dog, but I do have a Mustang. And I might go after my Mustang if somebody were to drive off in my Mustang. I'd like to see that as a movie, John. Uh, Joe, I'd like to have John Wick. Joe Wick, I'd like to see that as a movie. Whoa. Yeah, I I, I loved all four movies. The last one uh, was just so stylish. It was almost like an artistic masterpiece where John Wick's moving through this mansion and the camera's overhead like a video, like a video game scrolling. Yeah. And he's got these incendiary rounds that can <laughs> ignite people. Do you, and it's mindless, dumb, fun, but it's so You darn have a higher combat fatigue for, for me. <laughs> for me, in the fourth one, I was like, my God, this is the longest <laughs> shooting sequence. At some point, even if I'm working for someone, I'm like, I tried to shoot Wick and I missed. <laughs> Who, who's going to argue? He's going to kill my boss. I'd be like, hey, I survived. You survived John Wick? Yeah, I did. He, I survived Baba Yaga. He takes people out with a pencil. Pencil. Although I had people going like, you know, that suit's really good. I'm like, yeah, it's bulletproof. I don't know how many stairs you can fall down because <laughs> physics. I'm like, come on, John. How many stairs are you going to keep rolling down? <laughs> At some point, you look like a kid rolling down a hill. I'm like, come on, John. John just Wick has a, basically become a Bugs Bunny cartoon where yeah. he just doesn't, you know, show the uh Maybe the I need to revisit it. it with that in mind. Yeah. That it's yeah. just a Bugs Bunny. Like, just go in, you know, maybe have a glass of. Aren't you the know. one on this podcast? Introduce the phrase, just put your brain under your seat or something I am. like I that. I am that person, yes. That it, that describes John yeah. Wick perfectly. Take your brain out, set it down. Enjoy the popcorn. Put some popcorn in your open cavity. <laughs> yeah. Like it's about a Wolverine the same bucket stuff. that you can get. <laughs> there you go. Like a Pez dispenser pulling it. It comes out. You just <laughs> don't take it too The Wayne's seriously. World yeah. dispenser. Yeah. <laughs> the licorice dispenser. There you go. Yeah. Um. Another guy who uh, sort of made a career is uh, the anti-hero. And for me, I think this, not so much Rocky, because Rocky is just flat-out hero. Hero, yeah. But the one movie where this is a true anti-hero is this is a guy just minding his own business, runs afoul of the law, oh, and blood. just says, okay, I'm, you cross the line, and that's First Blood. Yeah. I, and, I love First Blood. I saw that movie yeah. when I was 12. I'm sorry to interrupt here. No, I, go ahead. I went and read the book. I thought it was so good, and that had a huge influence on me. Yeah. Uh, loved the actors, loved the whole thing. The book was just a tiny bit different, but it did go into a lot of the reasons. These guys were coming home from Vietnam. They were really mentally, and this guy had done nothing. Yeah. And he was just, he was just uh, for lack of a better, he was just itching for something to do. And, and he yeah. couldn't get a job, and, and he was just really, really, really good and he at came, killing. He yeah. came, and he came to visit his buddy, and Denny, he was such a jerk. Those <laughs> cops. I was like, yeah. you guys, I'm like, oh, my God, you guys are such And pricks. that's another 
common element of the antihero film is crooked cops, crooked politicians mm-hmm. that push you and that push trigger. you uh, until you just can't take it anymore. And really, Rambo, he 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 went out of his way to try not to hurt anybody. Yeah. He he caused a lot of damage without real. I don't know if he took any lives in in the first movie. Now later on, when he well, goes, the one guy uh, that fell out of the helicopter and oh. smashed his face. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> first blood, he takes yeah. a lot of lives, doesn't he? I don't. No, he he oh, maybe he, not. Maybe no. He just, I think I think he, he just shoots the wound. I think. I mean, oh. I mean, they all have to retire. I mean, they. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be laid like, up a little. He bit. ended a lot of careers, and they're, they're gonna, gonna collect. They got pensions. That, the best line of that movie fun. is, "I didn't come here to save John from you, John Rambo from you." I came here to save you from John Randall. <laughs> I love that line. Cause it's go- oh. yeah. yeah. And, you know, I got to say after, you know, I hadn't seen First Blood for years and years and years and years. And I kind of dismissed it as kind of a, you know, dumb action flick from the 80s. But when I rewatched it recently, yeah, his speech, like his emotional speech toward the end where he's like, I'm, I was just trying to mind my own business. Well, that, I personally, now you guys might laugh. I thought that was Oscar worthy. Like yeah. this speech was amazing. It was Oscar worthy, but what I heard is that it wasn't articulated enough. People were making fun of it. There should be subtitles. He's got the blood not for over <laughs> for you, but for me. Just like yeah. he, he was screaming it, and it was so hard to understand. Yeah. I had but to it was a it. great monologue. It, it really was, was a good monologue, and it was the only part where you felt like, other than his actions, that there was something beneath the surface. And yeah. he had a great, and he had, and he, and he started naming all these guys that had died and everything like. I, yeah. As a kid, that that hit home. Yeah. That was awesome. But then they, I love that monologue. They do yeah. the inevitable sequel, Rambo, the awkwardly named Rambo: First Blood Part Two, and um, that was just sort of a mindless shoot 'em up where he just mowed down hundreds of Vietnamese or whoever. Yeah, that's but, when he was like, "Well, he had to send you back to go, go get him." Like, all right. Yeah, but, but yeah. that was the John Wick of the series, right? That was yeah. f- part yeah, two yeah, and yeah. three and whatever just, else was just John Wick. The yeah. first one. I felt was really good. He's yeah. a justifiable underdog. Yeah. I wouldn't even call him an anti-hero. And it's, well, I guess he is, but anyway. Yeah. And and I guess, I don't know if it's just a Stallone thing. This happened with a lot of things. But you get that first movie that's really popular. And then as they do sequel after sequel. And uh, I just saw the lights go out. I'm like, what so was did that they, about? Did the um, was that the power one? But as they do more and more sequels, the, the sequels get more and more Goofy and dumb. Yeah. Like, Formula happy Eric. with the Rocky movies and stuff like that. But no, the the First Blood was, I think, a true anti-hero movie because he's going against the law. And but you're rooting for him because the law is corrupt. I look at that as storytellers or, or executives that missed the point of the first movie and just saw action and said, yeah. "Let's yeah. hype that part." Well up. said. Yeah, they yeah. missed what what Rambo the character was about. Like, yeah, let's just have him kill more people. Go to a different country. Well, I think it also showed. It also showed Stallone as something other than a fighter. Like yeah. a, fi- he looked. I think in some of the the movies he kind of looked flabby and kind of dumb. Suddenly here's somebody who's methodical, who's really who's who's you know good with a knife, good with a gun, good with good. Yeah. It's just a completely different narrative. Um, in fact, I think that Schwarzenegger in um, Predator was oh, right. the response to that a few years later. Like. Yeah. We got to figure somebody who's in the jungle, who's kicking ass and taking names. Let's get a bunch of guys in there. Let's let's. That to me was the, yeah, a spinoff almost of of First Blood because yeah. it was so effective how that was done. Yeah. and they but were all. And if you looked at all these guys, element. they're all former Vietnam guys, exactly. theoretically. Yeah. yeah, and that's all they're good at. That's, that's all, they're, all they're good at. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need to watch that one day. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> you will love Predator. No, I've seen I've Predator. Never, oh, uh, oh, First Blood. About, I've never seen any of the Rambo movies. First Blood's oh, a wow. slow burn. Yeah, yeah, but like it is slavery. very emotional and it builds nicely. Yeah, I think yeah. it has a really good build. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. No, I've, another. I always uh, wanted to watch it, but I'd, there's only so many hours in a day. I've got this. <laughs> yeah. For those who the are might be tuning in for the first time, <laughs> Andrew's list of movies to watch. <laughs> he he has them on a toilet paper roll, and it just goes on forever. I feel like it's going to be like Sisyphus in that boulder. Like it'll yeah. never happen. <laughs> hey, it's just going to be. I feel so bad because I'm, I'm chipping away at it. I watch yeah, uh, La La Land. La La Land, like you told me to, what and else? I loved it. Yeah, really? Fast awesome. Times at Ridgemont High, cool. which I've never seen and loved it. Awesome. But yeah, you know, I'm, getting, I'm, there. I'm, I'm getting, there. getting there. You're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's movies like Jaws, Jurassic Park. I've seen, I've seen those. <laughs> okay. I saw my, Jaws uh, my coworker, Tessa, just had her second baby, and she texted everyone a photo. 
And my comment was, I have a list of movies for your son to watch. That was my first response to seeing the picture of the baby. I love introducing people to new movies. My thing is, you know, AFI usually has their top 100 list that you can watch. And most of us, I feel, would be above 50%. Yeah. Andrew somehow makes like <laughs> baseball batting average I probably, like 300. I've seen like, like he's like an all-star at 300 <laughs> level. I'm like no, my batting my batting average is like that of the Tigers right now. It's like 215. Yeah, wow. it's for, for for movies. I wow. just recently revisited the AFI 100 greatest movie list. They did two versions. Uh, I looked at the oh, most recent one. They keep redoing one. it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and I'm at about 90 Five ninety six of that list of As 100 movies. Yeah, yeah I mean, but that, that's, that's there's a couple I have no interest the, in seeing. Are you? But. There's some of them that are that that include foreign, and some of them that are just domestic. Yeah, yeah. Are you looking at the one that's just well, the, domestic? That that film is supposed to be American films, but there it seems like there are a couple of foreign. Language well, there's like films Seven on Samurai on yeah, it, yeah, and there's yeah. like I think Old Boy is on there. That's yeah. a Korean yeah. movie. Uh, there's that um, movie is crazy. That's a phenomenal movie, I, but it is crazy. That, that fight scene in the corridor. That's what I was telling you guys about. Yeah. Which movie? Just one continuous take, uh, in, uh, fight scene in old. It's place. a hallway, oh, basically. Yeah, oh, yeah, it okay. is awesome. Huh. All right. The movie itself is it pretty, pretty like the end. You go, oh dear God. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, 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 yeah. I, I like. I think that I fit like in the in the bell curve. I'm like in the middle. I'm in, I'm in the seventies, high seventies. I think that's All healthy. Right. I'm like, oh, I still got stuff that I need to watch. I'm excited about. So yeah. you guys are almost at the pinnacle. They're like, oh, I got five more, and then I'm done. What do I do? <laughs> and then there's Andrew's like, yeah, yeah, you almost don't want to watch that last movie on the list. <laughs> and then, then what? Yeah, yeah then I'm like, what? Do I have to wait till another list comes. New, yeah. Whereas you know, Andrew's like the in George Clooney, a perfect storm. Like the the the, the, soon, the, the wave just keeps <laughs> going. Like I think Andrew's gonna make it. The ship just keeps going backwards like this. <laughs> and An- Andrew's like the the what father? <laughs> the Godfather. <laughs> I've okay. seen that movie once 20 years ago, so <laughs> come on. I don't remember it. Oh, my gosh. No, I need to start a podcast called Andrew Hasn't Seen. Yeah, right. And then watch three movies. And do your response. You should yeah. actually record yourself watching a classic <laughs> movie for the first time. Do one of those reaction videos. I wish I would have for Psycho because I told you guys, I didn't know the, the twist. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I was... 100%. That would have been really cool to see your reaction. That's almost, to I don't know, I, I think I find that admirable, but also scary because that movie's been, that'd be like, <laughs> did you know that he was the father of Luke? I had no idea. <laughs> like, man, dude, man. I mean, that, at Fair. some point you're like, think Accurate. about that. Next time you yeah. watch a classic movie, yeah. I want to see your reaction. Yeah, but that'd be really cool. Right, I'm also so envious back, in that Back level. down from the rabbit hole. Where were we heading? Like All right. Five, yeah. five, five rows. No, no, it's just funny. It's my fault, too. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, now, on. I want to talk about another actor who's pretty much made a career playing the anti hero, and that is one of my idols, one of my heroes, uh, Burt Reynolds. When you go back to the early days of his career, he did The Longest Yard, where he was a star football player who did something stupid, ended up in prison, and had to lead this team of prisoners against the guards, classic anti-hero material. Um, He did the White Lightning movies where he's running from the law and then has to work with the law, but there's corruption. uh, But, of course, the pinnacle, if I was to have a top ten list, right up there near the top is Smokey and the Bandit. Like, classic, classic anti-hero, a guy running from the law, um, the the law is just so persistent you're like why is this guy so obsessed with this one man because bert's not acting <laughs> no, <he's> not. <laughs> in real life he's the anti like he operates like that <laughs> bert's basically the guy who would push his dignity down a flight of stairs if he, if he got a chance at it <laughs> the bert reynolds laugh yeah um smoking the bandit i mean that i don't i don't think that necessarily started a trend but it was definitely probably the most successful movie who had those elements of fast driving, cool car, pretty girls and the anti-hero running from the law. You know, we saw it in, uh, uh, Oh gosh. Uh, now I'm like drawing a blank on some of these movies, but there were a lot of those car chase movies of people running from the law. And then of course, you know, he followed that up with like cannonball run and stuff like that. Wasn't there, uh, in the French connection, the movie posters, Gene Hackman shooting a guy in the back. Yeah. But like, like he's trying running to run away, away from yeah. him. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what a hero does. Like, there's bullet, there's yeah. bullet, and there's, there's, bullet, there's yeah. the French connection. Like you were saying, there's a lot of great ones that have some really fan, the French connection, whether underneath, I think it's in Brooklyn and they're underneath the, 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 the above ground subway. Yeah. That's a phenomenal scene. And you go back and you find out that, they didn't warn anybody they were coming. Like, they just shot it. It's like, wait, wait, really? wait what? Wait, yeah, what? Yeah. I mean, that people were actually that's, at danger? What? That, that's one of the, the best, craziest car chases in 
in movie history. Oh, it's insane. I, I like uh, and, uh, one one guy, one character comes to mind is Quint from Jaws. Yeah, Quint is an antihero. That guy is psych. I'm like Quint. You know, I, I, I value my life more than you know, means like three thousand bucks. I'm like, you could help the community that you live in and go kill the damn shark. You, <laughs> you have all the shark jaws everywhere. There. You could have done that <laughs> and then not gone crazy and like. Poor Chief Brody's like, hey, I just want to make a phone call. I'm going to break everything. I'm like, you're sort of masses yeah. the radio with the bat. Yeah. So where were we? Oh, the other <laughs> the other car chase movie I was trying to think of is uh, Vanishing Point. Oh, so the main yeah. character Kowalski, um, I'm not even sure what he's running from, but he's just running, and uh, and the DJ is you know announcing yep. where he is, and um, and then you could take that even further. And I again, this might be the pinnacle. Uh, was uh, was the Blues Brothers? You know, here you have you have Belushi's character uh, oh, getting yeah. out of prison, and these are two guys who you know clearly have a sordid history, but their motivation is to to raise money for what a, a church, a children's a, a school, school, a church school, yeah. yeah. And so again, they're running from the law, but they <laughs> they you know they make the Nazis mad. And uh, but yeah, and then it has one of the greatest car chases of all time through the mall and the hundreds of police cars. At the time, it was a world record for number of cars that were wrecked in the Blues Brothers. So yeah, so starting like in the '60s with those yeah. with Bullet and <laughs> and all that, and through the '70s with Vanishing Point and Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry and well, all that. One stuff. could argue that the Millennium Falcon is an extension of that. Yeah, you're right. It's a beat right. up old thing. That he, Nobody thinks anything of yeah, it. He That's just a car chase waiting to happen. Yeah. He says, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. beat the Kessel Run and two parsecs or whatever it is. He says <laughs> it's just 12. like you just. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> wow. Parsecs. It's never been done before. It's never been. But I love that because right then, you're watching it, you go, know, there's going to be a chase. It's a hot yeah. ride. It's a hot ride. Yeah. It's a hot and ride. And Luke's land speeder is, you know, yeah. yes. looks yes. like it's and, cobbled and, together. And, and because been tinkered Lucas with. loved, he just made American Graffiti. It was a exactly. love note. To, yeah, that's right. Oh, well, he also did Corvette Summer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Mark Hamill did Corvette Summer. And yeah. that was a cool move, too. And that was a, a big car chase movie as well. Yeah. 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 Well, he's chasing the car all yeah. over the country. So yeah. that's interesting. So, 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 so you've got this piece of machinery that surrounds. The yeah. anti-hero. Yeah, yeah. And it enables them to be, to to somehow become, it's it's like Iron Man with the suit on yeah. or anything else. It be, it becomes more and you, and, and their ability to, to use it is now their superpower. Yeah. The vehicle. And, you, and I can, and I it, can yeah. believe that. It's an extension that, of them. It's an extension of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and so Mad Max is the same way. Becomes a character in the movie. Yes, I mean, it does. Yeah, Mad Max is a perfect example. Yeah, V eight Interceptor is like a character in the that movie. That is such a badass car. Yeah. He's eating like t- dog food out in front of it. He <laughs> jumps in. And <laughs> like I don't know that I could yeah. do that on dog food stomach, but we're gonna have to revisit this topic uh, at some point because I'm I'm a car you know guy. what I let's do let's write that down. we can do a whole yeah, yeah. podcast Cars. on car chase movies oh, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have. And the blockbusters the that are in the car. I mean, look off the top of the head, you know what's coming up: the DeLorean, the Ghostbusters thing. <laughs> I mean, you you have car, like iconic cars in, in blockbusters, but sure. I uh, I was going to throw my hat in for uh, Daniel Ocean and his crew, antiheroes. They're thieves. Yeah, they're thieves, but they're the main. And you want them to? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they're about to rob. The casinos, okay. Yeah, I'm rooting for you guys, but they're doing it for a good reason, right? <laughs> well, they're getting back at this guy. That's part of it. Until there's a big reveal with the pretty redhead that looks a lot like Julia Roberts coming down the steps, and you realize that's the motivation. Love, love is the motivation of this entire heist. I love what she screwed up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not like well, she- I mean he. He, he played a role in that, but yeah. he went to prison for a number of years. But he's, again, a perfect antihero because he's, he's coming out of prison. He's, he's not a good person. I mean, he's committed crimes, even though you like his character. He goes to prison. <laughs> he gets out. What's the first thing he does upon getting out of prison? I got a heist that yeah. I want to pull off. And then the reveal is, why is he doing this? And it's that personal You're a liar and a thief. I don't do that anymore. I'm what? not thief? a perfect I. person. <laughs> yeah. And then Julia has that great line when she's saying, I'm with, I'm with so-and-so now, and Clooney says, does he make you laugh? And she says, he doesn't make me cry. And, and I'm like, oh, oh that's yeah. a great line. That's yeah, perfect for the anti-heroes. Anti- yeah. the anti-heroes will do that to you. Exactly. They're not perfect. That's the whole point. They're flawed. So, 
Yeah, so that's uh, that's a good one. Another one, this almost kind of ties back into car chases too, but it's along the same lines. It's Nick Cage in Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah. Yep. You know, his, uh, what was it, like his brother or somebody gets yeah. kidnapped, and to, to secure your brother's release, you got to steal all these cars. And uh, Nick Cage is in a bunch of movies where he's, sure the, he's the anti-hero. Yeah. So, he's the Declaration uh, of Independence. <laughs> right, exactly. But he's also favorite one, and this comes up all the time, Raising Arizona. Love that. Oh, my God, yeah. Here's another guy who robs a convenience store and then says, <laughs> Oh, uh, can I get these huggies, you know, for his <laughs> new baby that he just stole? That's one of my all-time favorite comedies is Raising It is Arizona. one of mine, too. And the dialogue and his character and, and just the narration. You seen it? Holly Hunter. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's a great, great comedy. That's uh, the Coen Brothers. Brothers. Coen Brothers, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's one, one of the earlier ones. That's one of the few movies of theirs I haven't seen. I yeah. It's so well done. So, yeah, Nick Cage is another great example yeah. of an actor who's made a career of playing the anti-hero, and people love him for it. Moonstruck so. is great. He's yeah. kind of going Snap after Cher. Yeah. Fantastic movie there. A friend, now, my, a friend of mine tried to make an argument for <laughs> verbal kint. He's a Kaiser Soze. I'm like, no, that's, that's verbal kint. That, that's a villain. That's not an anti-hero. <laughs> who, who is that? The usual suspects, Kevin Spacey was. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know that that's. I think he's just a liar. I don't think. Yeah. He's a, I think I was like, that's a villain. I, <laughs> that's I, a I, villain. I, yeah. I think you. I think you're seduced by the power of Kaiser Soze. That that's a villain. Yeah. Now, I have a couple other names I want to talk about, but before I get into those, I want to kind of change gears just a little bit, and there's, there's a reason for that. Nick confided something in me just before we started that his father passed away last week, and. His father was a fan of this podcast, if you can believe it. Loved this podcast, yes. loved movies, and he loved the classics, which I do. I have my list of 50 classics that I love. So I want to keep the anti-hero theme going, but I want to see what you guys think about the anti-hero from the classic era of films. And obviously some names that immediately come to mind are Humphrey Bogart, yep. who basically plays an anti-hero in almost every yeah role that he's in every movie that he's in yeah. dad's favorite Casablanca, movie. Casablanca. probably his greatest role and uh you know you, he at first you think oh he's just a greedy guy who just you know is doing this for money or whatever but then like when that couple needs money for their visa so he rigs the uh yeah, the leave, table leave the roulette there. table <laughs> yeah and and yeah and it's it's like wow this guy's a, a good guy but he doesn't want to get involved in politics or either side. He's kind of there's like doesn't four want to draw movies attention. he's in that all follow almost exact. That's the best of them, quote unquote, the best of them. But there's a number. There's a number one where he's a captain or he's a captain of a of a boat. And there's another oh, the one. Mutiny or was it no no no. no it's one where he's like smuggling things oh, in no, and out. That's I that's can't remember what. It's hmm, it's okay. okay. It's it is it's a common archetype for him. Uh, but I love the Treasure of the Sierra Madre is one yeah. of my favorite yeah, all time movies. They he all kind of lose their mind over cr- time, and that's and, the interesting thing is yeah. you can't beat the system. You can't yeah. you can't be the under underdog and go up against what you were just saying the the corrupt police, the corrupt politicians, yeah. the corrupt the girlfriend that doesn't quite understand you or she does, but you know, there's yeah. not enough time or whatever. And, and they them. go they go out of their mind mad, and you yeah. love that about them because they're it's it's you know David and Goliath they're yeah. it, it's just can't do it. Now mm-hmm. one thing that's interesting about that time period is you had the Hayes Code, and one of the rules of the Hayes Code is whether you liked the antihero or not. One of the rules of the Hayes Code is that if someone does something illegal or bad somewhere in the movie, they have to face consequences at the end. That was a rule. Eventually, they got rid of that. But in, a, in, in the case of uh, Sierra Madre, he faced consequences at the end. It was off camera, but you knew exactly yeah. what yeah. had just happened. So even though you're rooting for the character and you like this character, there is a rule that in the end, they I, got I theirs. Am, I am a child of the Hayes Code mm-hmm. because... I still love to see movies where the bad guy gets his comeuppance, I, even if it's too. in the last two I minutes, agree. even if the whole movie's yeah. about the evil, because I can't, <laughs> like, I got through the second, I got about halfway through the second re, uh, season, and you guys are going to laugh, of Game of Thrones, I'm like, who's my who's my hero here? Who do I have any help? These are all interesting characters, but they're all they're all just bastards, and yeah. I... And that seems all... to screw with my operating system. Ozark, same thing yeah. with uh, Jason Bateman. Well, Sopranos, that last season Sopranos? of Sopranos, 
every single one of those guys faced consequences. Maybe I need to push through. So I haven't been able to make it through that. And then the last yeah. one is the – anyway, there's another one. Yeah. Um, it's just hard to – oh, uh, Breaking Bad. Nobody yeah. to like. Yeah, yeah. And when, when – um, what's his name? Bob Odenkirk came out with uh, – Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. Yeah, yeah. That was a character I really liked. And yeah. I liked his brother. Uh, yeah. uh, what's his name? Not Ian. Uh, Ma- Michael McKean. Michael, Michael McKean. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. I really liked those characters. Yeah. I couldn't find anybody like that in both first seasons of Breaking. I just couldn't, and I yeah. just give a. I, I, but people love those. I'm a child of the Hayes thing. I mean, yeah. B- Butch and Sundance had consequences. You never saw it, but you, you freeze it was, frame. It was, it was understood yeah. what was going to happen. But to they them. weren't yeah. evil, evil. They girl. were anti-heroes. They, 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 they were robbers. They were anti-heroes, but they. I don't think they were black-hearted they were, because no, no. rain robbers. Yeah. Because they, they rode bikes around and had fun times. And you can't hit <laughs> like that. Fall, fall in, on my yeah. Exactly. You can't, yeah. You can't now, another watching. actor from the classic era, era that made a career playing the anti-hero, one of my all-time favorite actors, I read his uh, autobiography, was Errol Flynn. Errol. Errol Flynn was a great anti-hero. He played Robin Hood, who is probably one of the great anti-hero characters was, of all time. Again, l- l- was he playing a role? <laughs> Arrow, right. given his life. <laughs> Arrow being Arrow. Yeah, yeah, I think it was just Arrow being Arrow. Arrow. Yeah. But if you haven't seen Andrew, the uh, <laughs> Adventures <laughs> of Robin Hood, in my opinion, one of the top ten greatest movies ever made uh, with Errol and Olivia de Havilland and great villains. And I mean, Disney parodied it. What year Mel was Brooks that? Was it the 30s or the 30, 40s? Because yeah, I know, yeah. didn't Douglas Fairbanks play a version of it in like the 20s? Something he like was that? Zero, uh, he was Zorro. I don't know if he ever played Oh, Zorro. Uh, I'm getting yeah. mixed up. Zorro's oh, another good one, though. But no, I think it was the late 30s that he played Robin Hood, and then he was famous for the swashbuckling so films. Good. He was Captain Blood, which was another yeah. great one, where he's uh, he was a doctor who was wronged by the the, the uh, royalty of the time and was a slave and then led a revolt and eventually wound up back in power. A great anti-hero. It just occurred to me that I think Mel Brooks was really influenced because Princess Bride, when... Sure. Uh, well, not that he did Prince of Bride, but and then he yeah. did a uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights with Carrie oh, Elwes, right, right. and so it was always. I think he harkened back to Errol Flynn. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, now yeah, Princess Bride was uh, Reiner, Rob right. Reiner, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So Errol Flynn do- did those movies, and um, he was classic anti-hero where he was on the wrong side of the law, but the the crowd, the audience, just absolutely loved the guy. And when I read his autobiography, you realize he was like that in real life. That he had, he had looks, he had money, he had everything he could want, but was never happy and always in search of something. And the only time he was happy is when he was alone on an island by himself somewhere. And I'm like, really? All the wealth and fame and everything in the world, and that, that wasn't good enough. He just wanted solitude. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, he was the character he portrayed on screen. And, and there are a couple of like characters that I think of, like the crow when Brandon Lee played him. Not, I don't know mm-hmm. what happened recently, but... I, I, I acknowledge Brandon Lee's The Let's Crow. Let's not discuss that new movie. And then Blade, with <laughs> Wesley Snipes' Blade. The trilogy, the original, yeah. Well, yeah, the third movie was whatever. But the, <laughs> you know, the, Blade, the original Blade, you know, with uh, Wesley Snipes, you know, that was, again, those I think of antiheroes. Like, hey, listen, I'm not going to be your buddy. Yeah. I have a job to focus on, and if you're in my way, eh. Yeah. Now, The Crow's interesting because he's not necessarily, well, he does kill people, yeah. which puts him at odds with the police, but he befriends Ernie Hudson, yeah. the Detroit police officer. So they're kind of working together, but he ruthlessly and creatively uh, takes out the bad guys that murdered him and his uh, fiance or whatever at the beginning of the film. Spoiler alert. Um, but no, if, if I, again, if I was to do a top 10 list of greatest antiheroes, I might put Brandon Lee's depiction of the crow on there. Yeah. That's one of my I'm, favorites. I'm getting sick of the archetype or the, the the type of thing where somebody says oh you know i retired i'm no longer doing this yeah. but i was pulled back in for one <laughs> yeah. more time i'm getting sick of that i'm also getting sick of like you you know you just de- you destroyed my daughter or you've got my daughter and and in 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 in, in the best words possible i have a very specific skill set <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean but everybody kind of says something along those lines and it's like it's such a cheap <gasps> Hack. It's like an audience brain hack. How do you get everybody on the same? Well, they stole his daughter and they did mean <laughs> things to her. Oh, <laughs> let's kill everybody. Let's yeah. blow everything up. Yeah. Men, women, children, chickens, dogs, everything. <laughs> let's do it. Like an uh, Uma Thurman and Kill Bill. 
when she tells Vivica Fox's daughter, when you're ready, I'll be, if you want it, I'll come and get it. I'm like, yeah. you're telling a kid? <laughs> Basically, you're putting the plan. Like, revenge. I'm sorry, I had, to do, I had to do your mom like that, but if you yeah. want it, you know where to find me. I'm like, Jesus, lady, just <laughs> give, this, give the kid a hug. Yeah, true. But you know, God, you just made me think of something. So in, in the Kill Bill movies, she basically was left for dead, and it becomes a revenge film. And I'm like, where have I seen that before? Oh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Hang him high. Oh, they leave or him for dead. The, or the Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Yeah, yeah. It's the same You've thing. You've wronged me, and I am now coming for you, and that is a... Well, and here thing. and here's World War II again with Pearl Harbor. They killed all these people in Pearl Harbor, so that's the justification for us to go and blow the hell out of Nagasaki and, and, and Hiroshima. Yeah. Now, here all these many years later, you killed my dog, I'm going to kill 500 people. Yeah. I'm like, I, yeah. It doesn't, it's an, the, it's the an, balance is so weird yeah. to me. Like, don't set him off. Why? Well, if you scratch his car, you're a dead man. You know, yeah. oh, gosh. You know, it just seems so Could so you imagine ridiculous. what happens if he has a remainder in long division? He'll go, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't adding up. Yeah. I will find you, and I will kill you. Six divided by seven? No. <laughs> No, you know, that could be another podcast in itself. The movie cliche. Yeah, I got to admit, there are some that I love. There are some that cause me grief and anguish. I was just talking to someone the other day about the, uh, one of my pet peeves is the uh, waking up from a dream sort of a thing. Where uh, you're led to believe that something's happening to a main character and then it's revealed it's all a dream. And I hate that cliche. I despise it. But some of the very things that George just mentioned, I'm like, I kind of like that. I kind of <laughs> like the you wronged me and uh, you messed with the wrong person. Uh, you know, your Jack Reacher <laughs> movies, your your Mission Impossible movies. Well, Jack Reacher like I don't think was, I don't know. I just saw, what's that movie called? Roadhouse, the new one with Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. <laughs> no, we're talking, we're talking, what's his name? Patrick, Patrick, Swayze. Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Did you see the new one? No. You got to see it. No. You got to see I'm it. I'm 80s, baby. Man. I, I happen to think that I'm, I'm. correct me if I'm wrong, but you're an open-minded <laughs> student Not of when it film. it comes to my 80s movies. All right, all right, all right. Call it something Robocop. else and go they see it. Fright Night, man. Come Don't on. Call, okay, so, so in your mind, I want you to change and replace <laughs> the word Roadhouse with Bungleville or something, <laughs> you know, something else. But there's a great scene where Jake Gyllenhaal, have you seen it? Yeah. There's a, there's a great scene where instead of killing everybody, all the guys come out. Have you guys seen this? And it's a great scene because I'm going to ruin something here, but he slaps them. <laughs> oh. And and they stand in there like, what? He goes, do you guys have medical insurance? And they're like, what are you talking about? He goes, I, says, I, just, I just want to make sure. sure. By the way, where's the closest hospital? And they're like, what are you talking about? I actually like... That that was refreshing for me. I'm giving you a chance. I mean, you know what though? But, but that was also. But he got that from been, Jack Reacher. Yeah, and but that's that's kind of a cliche in films too. Because you remember in True Lies, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's tied up in a chair. He's been shot up with sodium pentothal. Yes. And he describes yes. Exactly, exactly what he's going to do, happen. and then he does it. You know and my you handcuffs? Yeah, I picked them. <laughs> <laughs> I picked them a few minutes ago. <laughs> That's right. And so you have the hero describe what he's going to do, and they all go, <laughs> yeah, we'd like to see that. And then he does exactly what he described. So. That's another movie cliche that I think That's a is good point. actually kind That's of almost like the fun. equalizer. He says, I gave you a chance. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, he's going to do it. Yeah. And then he sets the <laughs> clock yeah. down. Let's see if we can beat my personal best here. So. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, classic films you can think of uh, that have the anti-hero? We touched briefly on Zorro. I think one of the best versions of Zorro, I like the early versions, but I love the one with... Um, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Antonio Antonio Banderas. Banderas. That's a really great version of Zorro. Uh, Antonio Banderas. Yeah, yeah. Now I recognize the name. I don't know who Antonio Banderas is. Oh, I have to to give it an accent. Yeah, I know who Antonio Banderas is. Antonio Banderas. Say it again slowly. Uh, Antonio Banderas. (laughs) Antonio Banderas. Boots and Boots. Hello. That's like Uh, his Saturday Night Live skit when uh, Chris Catan used to play. I am an Antonio Banderas. No, Antonio is too sexy. (laughs) Too sexy. Oh, no. Uh, Who else? Give me some classic antiheroes. Uh, I'm gonna oh. defer to poor Andrew hasn't had much to say here, so I yeah, think he's got. Yeah, but I some... don't. I, I've seen the least of these classic Come on, movies compared list. to you guys. Come on, get a list. Come well, on. Well, I in Where Eagles Dare, Richard Burton's character, he was like, "I'll do whatever it takes to get get this job done, dynamite." But it's again, you're killing. 
They're all Nazis, but some of them were like Gestapo. But but some of them were just soldiers that were drafted. He's like, I don't care. Here's dynamite. <laughs> this yeah. is happening. I watched a movie I'd never heard of just recently, and I, I'm trying to think of what the name of it is, but it starred Edward G. Robinson, who gets caught up in this thing that just keeps spiraling out of control, and he he kills someone and, like, hides them in the woods, but then he's helping the police investigate the crime, and he's accidentally, like, kind of tipping his hand, and they're like, well, how would you know that? And he's like, I'm just guessing. Um, so Edward G. Robinson, he's another great a classic actor who plays the uh, the gangster, the antihero. And that's the thing. And and um what's Cagney. his name? Cagney. Cagney. When just Double indemnity. Gangsters. They play killers, but you like them, you sympathized with them. Yeah. You know? Edward G. Robinson and Double Indemnity? Yeah. No, no. He says no. In which Edward G. Robinson plays Barton Keys, an insurance claims investigator. No, double indemnity. indemnity. He wasn't the star of that. That was Fred. No, that was Fred, Fred McMurray, McMurray. Yeah. was the, yeah. the guy in that. But that could probably be the antihero, the guy who uh, falls in love with the girl and does her bidding. You know that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, and so the, the the classic era had a lot of those gangsters that you sympathize with, and the American public sympathize sympathize with. They cheered on the Bonnie and Clydes and the Dillingers and, and the, uh, especially in the movies. And, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting back then. Well, there's also, there's also the aspect of like the, the retribution, like mob retribution. So it's not just an antihero who's one guy taking on the mob or whatever, but there's also when, um, you when you get a whole town or something and everybody decides to go after the bad guys, um, and that's those are interesting too. That's a think, separate. High noon. Well, if you think of like yeah. even Elliot Ness and, and Kevin Costner, the Untouchables, like yeah. uh, we got we need cops that can break the like that are willing to go yeah. above and think. Mississippi outside. Burning is Mississippi another one. Mississippi Burning, love oh, yeah. that one. Yeah. 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 Well, think about you guys touch on Bonnie and Clyde, and and again, this is based on real life. But think about how they got Bonnie and Clyde. The FBI laid in waiting in the <laughs> tall grass, and they they kind of put up a distraction that caused Bonnie and Clyde to pull over, and when they. Sh- when they pulled over, the FBI just shot him to death. <laughs> there was no like, arrest. They never said, put your hands up, blah, 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 blah. They just mowed them down with hundreds the one with Wait, they didn't read them the Miranda rights? Nothing. They just <laughs> the, the one, killed them. The one with where Faye Dunaway and, and Warren Beatty, that looked like duck season, rabbit season. They all just come on <laughs> pop daffy, like all the hunters pop daffy repeatedly. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. I just saw that car, by the way. It's in Nashville. Oh, no, it's not Nashville. It's, it's in, in uh, uh, Whiskey Pete's. Is it Whiskey Pete's right now? I Is saw it. Right? Yeah, in Nevada. Nevada, yeah. Oh, the actual one? I saw the car. I saw the movie one. Okay. Uh, no, and you the... didn't. <laughs> and he, okay, here's I didn't, why. All right, I didn't see that. <laughs> You're one of the many gullible dupes. Oh, think... I called everybody morons, so I deserve this. <laughs> this is I deserve no. this. is my comeuppance. If you think you've seen the movie Bonnie and Clyde car, you haven't unless you went to this crime museum in Pigeon Forge. That's Tennessee. where I was. That's hey! where I saw it. Right. Hey! Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm only less moronic than if you, you thought If you were in Pigeon Forge, you then saw the That's the one I saw. And it is the Alcatraz. And by the way, that's a phenomenal museum. Get past the first five, ten minutes, and it opens wide up because okay. it's amazing. I've, now, I've driven by it 70, <laughs> 70, I've driven by it 70 times on visiting my family in Georgia. but Don't never, take kids. Never stop. Really? It's disturbing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's good. Now, the original, yes. yeah, 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 the yeah. actual historical car, normally that's kept at Whis- Whiskey Pete's Casino in, in Nevada. But I was in L.A. a few years ago, and it was on temporary loan at the Reagan Library, and they had a, a FBI exhibit, a temporary FBI exhibit. Oh, wow. And imagine me walking through this exhibit. They had some 9-11 artifacts and some other things, and I turn the corner, and there is the original Bonnie and Clyde car full of bullet holes, and it was really amazing to see up close that, like I said, the FBI gave no warning, just gunned them down. Sure they did. So. They gunned them down and said, freeze. We, <laughs> yeah, they, we're going to fire a warning shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 600 of them. Um, so, yeah, those are great antiheroes. Uh, I just kind of, I don't, I feel like I'm ready to wind down a little bit, but I wanted to throw out a couple of um, modern names. Um, hey, hey, Andrew's no, got no, some. No. no, come on, come on. Let's hear it. Are you, oh, don't, he's, don't yeah. sit in the what corner here. Come on, come on. Hear it. Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver. Yeah, oh. that's an interesting one. He's kind of a victim of circumstance and, and feels like he needs to take the law into his own hands. Yeah. Clean up the streets, protect. Um, one day a real way. Now, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if if you guys have seen this. It's a Kubrick movie of Barry Lyndon. 
Never saw that. Wait, what? Barry Lyndon? No, no. I haven't yeah. seen that. So it, it's it's one of his least known movies, but Kubrick. it's it's his it's it is it definitely won best cinematography uh, for that year. It's really long. And it's a slow slow burn. Is that that's not right? It's Barry Boswick or who who R- played Barry I think Lyndon? It's, uh, Ryan O'Neill. Oh, okay, all right. And it is the most beautiful movie I've ever seen. Wow, the way it's shot. Barry it's, Lyndon. It's it's really epic. It's like two and a half three hours long. Wow, you can't watch it in one night. Um, See, but that's where that, I, I I appreciate. It. He will skip all everything else, but he'll go find those diamonds. <laughs> that's a <laughs> three hour. You, you haven't seen. It? No, uh, I've romance novel. Yeah, it, no. it's excellent. Okay. Um, who else do I have? On there? Yeah, um, yeah, go on. Sorry. A- um, Andrew finds the truffles. <laughs> I, I, Ma- Mad Max was on my list. Yeah. And then Mick Murphy in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Anti-authority. Yep. Yeah. Tragic ending. But and, and mm. as the movie goes along, you s- at the beginning of the movie, you know he's a jerk. He he only wants to be there so he doesn't do hard labor in yeah. in prison. Yeah. For a supposedly rape. Um, but he knows that he can make the residents there laugh. Yeah. He realizes how terrible Nurse, Rat- Nurse Ratchet is, tries to, you know, get under his skin. And you could see he starts, even though he kind of makes fun of the residents at the beginning, he starts to kind of feel, kind of feel sorry for him and he wants yeah. to entertain him. And then at the end, when they take the boat out, Oh my gosh! Yeah. I love that part. Yeah. I love well, that part. There's the young man who's never uh, he's had a virgin, a virgin, yeah, yeah, yeah. never oh. had any relations. That's that's heroic in a sense, and yeah. he's and he's pretty happy. Even about though that. Ratchet goes and ruins everything, and again, she's the authority figure who's corrupt with power. Yeah. Wasn't there and... a movie made out about Ratchet or something like that? Uh, I, I, think that. Was a, yeah. I think it was. I think it was a TV series. TV series. Ugh. Oh really? I. I haven't heard anything about it, so I assumed it wasn't yeah. great. The actress, uh, Louise Fletcher, I think is her name, she played Nurse Ratchet, and she won an Oscar for that. And she's she like, did. She goes, I must have did a good job because you folks oh, yeah. hate me. <laughs> yeah. And Excellent. She, yeah. And then the one that I was going to talk uh, a few minutes about, and I know George and Nick have seen it, but I don't think you have Joe Drive with Ryan Gosling. Love Drive. You've seen it? It's a car movie, man. I was going to say, I don't Give I me don't some know. credit. I I, I've seen that movie a million times. Love I love drive. it. Yeah. But I don't know if you and I had ever specifically talked about it. No, I, no. I don't know. So there's only so many hours in a day, but you've seen that a million times. <laughs> I, I, I put on that movie to feel better after okay. after a bad day. I don't gotcha. know what that says about my, yeah. my psyche, but. Yeah. Um, it's kind of ultraviolet, but uh, great car chases. That and, cast. Uh, yeah. The guys, Carrie Mulligan, Brian Cranston, Albert Brooks, Oscar Isaac, oh which gosh, I think yeah. that was the first time I've seen Oscar Isaac. Right. Yeah. Christina Hendricks has a small part in Ron Perlman. Yeah. Oh, Ron. He's um, the villain, right? Yeah. yeah. I, and, I think there's like four scenes in that that just stick with me. The elevator yeah, scene. The elevator, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the car scene where he holds his hand, Albert Brooks. I've always loved Albert Brooks. He's, yeah. the, he's, the, he's the father of Finding Nemo, right? Of Nemo, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. he's, he, he's always come across as this goofy guy. He was in uh, saving or or defending your life. Defending your life. Just a goofy guy who falls off the. He's trying to put in a an antenna on top of his roof and he falls. Off. This guy know. is like this horrific villain. He's phenomenal. And then what else have you got? Obviously the the. Um, I was going to mention two things. So um, the car that he drives, the seventy three Malibu, he got to pick that. Gosling got to pick that himself. Huh. In a junkyard. What? And, and they fixed yeah. it all up? And he he himself, I think, helped fix it up, if I read that correctly. Wow. All right. And also, I'd never heard of this. Maybe you guys have. Maybe it was more common in the past. Hold on. Before you... Is this about the movie? This the is drive? About, yeah. I would just want to throw something out real quick. Yeah. The, that car, the Malibu, and the Mustang that they do the robbery with at the beginning, you can find hanging on the pegs at toy stores and toy aisles. Uh, Green Light, the diecast car manufacturer, has done diecast cars from drive. Wow. Whoa. That's, okay. a, that's a deep cut. That is yeah. pretty cool. That's, that's my thing. That's my cut. little yes, area yes. of expertise. Nick, uh, Joe knows these things. All right. Go ahead. And I was just going to add one last thing. And this, this like I was going to say, this maybe Stars did this in the past. So the whoever, I, I don't know if it was some production company or their studio, they were going to do the movie, but they didn't have a director. They got Gosling first. And they let him pick the director. Oh, okay. What? He was going to be the director, then they let no, him No, no, no. They, they got the guy Gosling for the role. They hired him oh, to act yeah. and said, who have do you, you want to direct? Have you heard of that before? No, sure. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I that has happened that. a lot. That's interesting. Like, in the last 
30 years? Well, yeah, you I, have to have I, a father. I could see that happen big stars in the 50s and 60s, but yeah. It, I, it, it happens it, probably more often than you might think. Yeah. And I, I thought that was. Yeah. Who's the director was, again? So is, he's a Danish guy, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn. I don't think I've seen anything else he's done. He's done a lot of like indie. Sure. Indie films. Have yeah. you seen anything? No, no, no. But uh, that movie, there's just something about it. that opening scene when they, he's driving off in, in, in the middle of the night in Los Angeles in that slow overhead view of the city in the helicopter and that synthesizer music playing. Ah, yeah. I just, I love it's that. It's funny you mention that because I, I have a, a car theme playlist on my phone and one of them is, it's called A, a Real Hero is the name of that yeah. song they, with the dun 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 yeah. dun dun dun. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, that plays later on when they're driving uh, in the, the L.A. River Basin exactly. with uh, Carrie Mulligan and her son. Yeah. Man. I yeah. love that movie. I own those, it on DVD. I have the diecast cars. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Excellent. Andrew, you never have to worry about it. It's one of those movies that feel good when I turn, you know, I want to come home after a hard day's work. Where you start to get concerned is when you say, I had a hard day's work, I come home and I turn on like Schindler's List or Sophie's Choice, <laughs> and that makes me For feel- For a good laugh. Yeah. Still I still need to watch those two movies. <sighs> <sighs> Some people just can't see the comedy in Schindler's List. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I, yeah. did, I didn't say that. That's yeah, terrible. Did. That's definitely terrible. That's is that Andrew it on joke. your list there, Andrew? You got any no, more I, on your I'm list? I'm done. All right, I was going to cool. do kind of a rapid, uh, rapid fire here. Hero or anti-hero? Oh, Ferris, good. Ferris Bueller. Hero. Not an anti-hero because the elements are there. Rooney is the authority figure, yeah. the principal. Uh, Ferris skips school. He's kind of the you know anti-establishment guy. He I lies. He, quali- he steals yeah. a Ferrari, puts a whole lot of <laughs> that's true. A whole lot of, and then the Ferrari gets destroyed. I mean, you could make that, but he's also kind of a hero because Cameron and poor what's her name, Jordan? No, what's yeah. her name? No. His girlfriend. Yeah. What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Uh, oh, it's Ferris. Bottom. And yeah. come on, what's her name? Mia, Mia, on the Mia Sarah. Is Mia Sarah actress? is the actress. But I don't what's remember. her name? Yeah, it's act- like Sloan. 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 Oh, they yeah. both needed to be rescued. They really. Did. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that was the whole point of the day was to rescue Cam. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. he did that on a Friday too. <laughs> if he did that like on a Tuesday, I'm like Ferris, this is so strange, man. You got the rest of the week coming up. <laughs> Here's a here's another one of my favorite anti heroes. I have a little soundbite here, right. um, if I can find it. There it is. I'm your Huckleberry. Why, Johnny Ringo? You look like somebody just walked over your grave. So Doc Holliday in Tombstone. Oh uh, yeah. Is yeah. a thief, murderer, gambler. And but he befriends the Earps, who, in history, may or may not have been the good guys, depending on what side of the fence yeah. you were on. And together they get in the shootout. They kill a couple of guys, and so uh, the all the heroes in uh, or anti heroes in in Tombstone, I think, fit the bill. But no one more so than Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday. I think one of the great. Anti-hero one of his best roles. Yeah. Val Kilmer should have won an Oscar roles. for that role. Yes. Did he? Did he get nominated? Um, not even nominated. Didn't get nominated. I don't think. No. I don't mind if you don't win. You got to get the nomination. That's like going to the final four. At least get there. Hero or anti-hero? Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, movies. anti-hero. Anti-hero. Yeah. yeah. Again, running from authority, taking him off, always escaping, always getting. But away. Orlando Bloom's character, hero. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty much a yeah, flat-out hero. But yeah, the annoying type, but too. Jack Sparrow's more of a scoundrel who always seems to For a, f- get for out a brief of second, he was going to shoot Kira Knightley, and I loved that. When she had burned all the rum, and he thought, I should shoot this woman. Oh, he's, like, got, a, he's got a serious thing for yeah, rum. Like, where's yeah. the rum? <laughs> I could see who that drank gl- the rum? Right. I could see that glint of murder. Like He's like, I should do it, but I can't. <laughs> uh, Eddie Murphy, another actor uh, who made a career playing antiheroes. Now, I was thinking about this. I was breaking this down in my head. Beverly Hills Cop. I knew this. Yeah, yeah. Even though he's a cop, he is in the role of authority. Yeah. When he goes to L.A., he's out of his element, and he's pissing off everybody around him, including the chief and the lieutenant and everybody out there. So in a way, well, he fractured a large he's piece. the anti-hero, and he doesn't play by the rules, and he has to bullshit his way out of it. Yeah, he's an um, anti-hero. But yeah. what, so now what does anti-hero mean? Because there's a dark side of things and that – you kind of follow and and they're the, you've got the you've got the Al Pacino where we love him 
he's a terrible person and there's nothing heroic about what they're doing. But right. we're still following in their wake. We still understand. It's the same thing with the Joker. I can't imagine that there's going to be him saying, I'm, I'm trying to defend people or whatever. Right. So there's that type. And then you have Eddie Murphy who's like, look, I'm just trying to get all these people out of the way so I can do what's right. And I've always yeah. wanted to do what's right. But it, not necessarily by the book. Like but, so in Beverly Hills, there are rules you have to go by, and Eddie Murphy's like, screw those rules. This so guy the, killed my friend. So, so there's the chaotic good anti-hero, yeah, the yeah. chaotic bad, or whatever. What chaotic you, neutral. <laughs> chaotic yeah, he'd, neutral. Be chaotic, he'd be chaotic good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Axel Foley would be chaotic good. Yeah. When and, there rules, whereas Pacino would be, in oh, Dungeon be, and Di- Dragons terminology, what would he be? He'd be chaotic neutral, Pacino. He, he wouldn't be. He, he wouldn't chaotic, be. Chaotic, chaotic. Good guy. Uh, you can understand chaotic, his motivation. Chaotic, chaotic. Well, 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 whatever. Decisions. Well, which role? Are you talking about his Godfather role? No, no, no. What are, what are you talking which about? Role, which, Dog which, which, Day which, or Godfather? Or... Depends on which role. I'm talking like Scarface yeah, and yeah. some of the other ones that are just it all depends evil. Depends on your perspective. Yeah. yeah, Scarface. He's. I would say he's full villain. Like chaotic there neutral to villain. Like yeah. I would say more villain. Like he's like, dude, it's cocaine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you've you've cr- you have like this also this weird way you're looking at your sister, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I, again, I'm like, man, what is going on with all this stuff? Like. But getting back to Eddie Murphy, you look at his roles, 48 Hours, yep. Beverly Hills Cop, Trading Places, all sort of anti-hero type characters who are anti-authority, but you like them and you root for them. And uh, I think that's one of the number one characteristics of the anti-hero is anti-establishment, anti-authority. And they'll fight villains. Your own way. Like the, yeah, du- yeah. the Dukes were villains. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, it's like that? You okay. handle it your way. <laughs> is it is it Bill? So one of our, our studio audience members here, uh, <laughs> brought up uh, Spaghetti Westerns. Um, oh, yeah. And um, I, I think he had, what was the question? Tuco versus... Tuco, Tuco versus, versus Blondie, Blondie, which one's the anti-hero? And oh. so remind me who which one's Tuco. Tuco's the, is the Mexican and, and Blondie is, is, good, good, is bad, Clint Eastwood. Is that what we're talking about? Is it yeah. good and the bad and the ugly? Yep. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're all, I mean, the man they all with have no name. redeeming qualities, but they also have negative qualities. So My friend was trying to say Hi- High Plains Drifter, he was an anti-hero. I'm like, I don't know. He took that lady into the barn and raped her. I don't know if we can c- call that as a- Eastwood's character. Hero. Yeah, and High Plains Drifter. I don't remember Drifter. that. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go villain on that one. High Plains Drifter? I don't remember that either. Yeah, it was oh. weird. I mean, when that scene happened, I'm like, uh, I'm, someone needs to teach you some manners. I'm like, this yeah. may not age well. And that's I'm glad you brought up Eastwood because he's made a career out of that. And, yeah. and brought even more, more, one of the more recent Dirty films Harry. was Gran Torino, yeah, where he was kind oh, of like this racist guys. curmudgeon who, you know, stay off my lawn. But then when he learns the customs and the ways of his neighbors, starts to sympathize with them. And so yeah. he not doesn't start off being a likable character, but you still sort of root for him. Denzel's and, character in Man on Fire. <laughs> I love uh, what's his face uh, uh, when he when he's just talking about his uh, Creasy's artist death and he's gonna pay he's about to paint his masterpiece Christopher Walken he's like people have different things food music Creasy's artist death <laughs> he's like they should ne- they're gonna wish they never harmed a hair on that little girl <laughs> and the guy's like you know forgiveness uh, he's like you know God preaches forgiveness well their business with God it's my job to arrange the meeting I'm like well Ooh, y'all about to die. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> a great like, line. Yeah, if you watch Man on Fire, I'm like, well, you're all about to die. <laughs> the last actor I wanted to throw out who who's made a career <clears throat> playing the anti-hero is Bill Murray. And almost everything yeah. that he's been in, he's kind of an a-hole going all the way back to stripes and meatballs and all that stuff. But you you like him. You want to be his friend. Even Groundhog Day, he starts off as sort of a pompous, yeah. arrogant sociopath who is redeemed by the events in the He's film. He's an anti-hero in Ghostbusters. He exactly. gets ready to put his house up. He's like, how are we going to fund this? I don't know. We just got to- <laughs> Everyone's getting a third mortgage these days, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like 27% interest. You didn't even try to negotiate the rates down. Yeah. So he has made a career, and he is one of my all-time favorite actors. I love everything he does from... Rushmore to uh, uh, Life Aquatic, you name it. Loss in Translation. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. He, he plays that role. What about Bob? So is a great well. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he, that's chaotic. That's just chaotic, yeah, chaotic. Yeah. yeah, that's just pure chaos. I have no idea what he's doing. And what about Bob? And he's, he's I sail. I'm a sailor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but his 
his he's just entirely charismatic. Like that's the only redeeming quality that all these characters have is there's something about them that it, you're drawn to. You want to be friends with them, but they're not necessarily good people. But there's just something about these characters. And there's comeuppance. He gets a lot of it in yeah. Groundhog Day and in. in Ghostbusters, he gets slimed. He's the only person to get slimed. <laughs> He's slimed. Would you say that Richard Dry what would you say Richard Dreyfus's character is Leo Marvin in What About Bob? I've only seen that like once forty years ago. Oh, you gotta see it again. Yeah, I would it sounds really like me, good. Joe. <laughs> right. Yeah. What no, you say? know what? I, I would say initially because he comes across because everyone is against him. Because he wants to have time with his family, and then he can't get exactly. rid of this guy. Exactly. And you, I kind of feel bad for him, but at some point, his like, wife dude, and kids are against him. Yeah. He's like the underdog. By the end, you're like, wait, <laughs> this is terrible. I'm like, Bob, I'm like, Bob, you're gonna screw up his family dynamics. And really, it's like, am I screwing up, or is this stuff you needed to address? And I'm like, okay, Bob. <laughs> when when the doctor's standing outside of the, they they call a doctor for Leo Marvin. Yeah. And the doctor's standing outside, and and uh, Leo and Leo, Doctor Leo Marvin's lost his mind. And the doctor says, well, I've decided to, to prescribe him X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And Bill Murray says, I, don't you think that uh, ABC would be a, a, better, a better option? And the doctor says, you know, I think you're right, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I am going to say. And, and he's just in the other room. And he's just going crazy because <laughs> now the roles have completely shifted. Flipped. Yeah. Completely shifted. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I, just I just thought of another when we were talking about this. Uh, Leon the Professional. Oh, I, was thinking, I saw that five minutes ago. It's a yeah. great movie. I looked yes. at some lists, and that was definitely on yeah. one of the lists. Joe, I, I thought saw. you were going to say I saw that movie. No, I, uh, I, 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 I know. The last time we talked about it, so yeah. I, it was on my list of films to watch until we discussed on one episode of our podcast the how things haven't aged well. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm hesitant to sit down and watch it, but well, we'll because see. of Luke. Yeah, Luc Besson and his thing. Right, you right. know the way. There's so many anti-hero characters. You could almost have like a uh, March Madness bracket of it. Like, oh, who yeah. gets to advance? <laughs> it's yeah. like, who makes the final four of the messed up characters? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, there are certain actors that come to mind, and uh, I don't know. My final four would, if we're talking about actors, not necessarily characters. Al Pacino, Burt Reynolds, uh, Nick Cage, Bill Murray. Uh, yeah, that would be like my final four of actors who made a career so playing So Errol and characters. Bogey don't make it? Ah, uh, boy, Errol. final four? Errol would be very, very close. Bogey. All right, you had to go there, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, this, this is the whole Rushmore thing. You can only get four heads on there, I so who's four goes? Someone can make it. Yeah. Now, I'd have to pound some stakes next to yeah. and put up a fifth head and a sixth head. But... All right, I touched on all my people. Any final thoughts, gentlemen? That's not a good drop, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I'm good. This is a great episode, and yeah, yeah, that was fun. But Joe, here's what I don't usually have a list because I usually think I'm, I'm usually aligned with you, so I just kind of I have the easiest I part. Trigger, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just do, have to like. I do go. have one last one. All right, oh. let's end on that. Tyler Durden, the Fight Club, there. one of my least favorite movies of all time. <laughs> Is it because of the ending? Because if it's because of the no. ending, I'll go with that. No, I, I don't like the movie because it promotes, it glorifies chaos and anarchy, and I'm not wired that way. I used to work with a guy who was like this that. This is the Hayes Code that we grew up with. I'm, I'm not <laughs> joking. No, I really right. believe that that kept, yeah, go on. And, yeah. So I don't like glorifying chaos. I try to eliminate chaos in my life. That's why I hate movies like Fight Club, like Clockwork Orange, uh, places like oh, movies Clockwork like Orange that. Clockwork Orange is very dark. Not yeah. a fan of those Harsh. kind of movies. So, all right. Unfortunately, that's the note yep. we're ending on. <laughs> movies I hate. <laughs> now, on a future podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to tease people. Uh, when we come back in a couple of weeks, it's going to be October. And, and October is the spooky season. Uh, so we're going to kind of focus on horror and, and uh, scary movies and stuff over the Give next it a month. couple episodes. But if you guys are all on board, one of our podcasts falls on the day before Halloween. And I talked to the staff about this today. We are going to try to go live the day before Halloween with our Halloween episode. So... When I describe a movie as a Halloween episode or a Halloween movie, that can include horror, slasher, psychological thrillers, sci-fi, you name it. 
And we're just going for Come favorites? Everything. Favorite. Oh, movies to man. watch at Halloween or Halloween season. I'm going to come with 36 movies. There you go. <laughs> so that's going to be our live episode. So uh, folks, tune in. We'll be live on Facebook and on Can we ONTV. have candy in the studio? I will bring candy corn and uh, maybe some chocolate, full-size candy bars maybe. Chocolate yeah. plastic variety <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> that's right. So that's going to be a fun one. But we got a couple episodes before then, so we're going to try and focus on see if can horror. Find my Halloween yeah, goblet. I want to have like. Yeah, I'm excited. It's one of my favorite times of the year. So. Could 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 we? The question is not candy, but candles. Oh, candles. Could we have candles in it? No, probably not. Mm, we'll see. Just we kidding. do have cameras, so we w- need watch cameras. cameras need light. Watch well, this be the airtight room. We burn <laughs> up all the oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of slump over. It's like, why is everything starting to slow down? It's sealed tight. All right. On that note. We're going to end with our theme. And, awesome, Josh, guys. Uh, we'll really see you fun. in October. And Fantastic. Just a couple of weeks away. Come to the movies. Watch Charlie Chaplin. And put some sunshine into your day. Forget the hard times. Come to the movies. And try to laugh your troubles away.